Same diff, as they say. Same diff. Oh my god. I don't want to hear the song again. I want to get Jaybird Wells in here. Maybe. What is the deal with this? Recent chats. Let's do that. Is recent chats the thing that I need to do? What the hell's the deal? What 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 is sort by unread? Let's do that. How about that? There you go. Sort by unread. Instead of sort by time. <laughs> what worthless crap. Skype is so worthless sometimes. Okay, let's do this. Uh, Nate Lee? No, not Nate Lee. What about just Lee? What about Lee Bryce? Lee Bryce. He's, his name is Lee Bryce. He's the Lee Bryce man. No, his name's not Lee Bryce. Okay. Can I can I sort these by I don't know, people just send you messages? Can I sort them that way? <laughs> sort by time. How about sort by time? Will that work? Uh no. Apparently that doesn't work either. What is the deal here? There we are. Okay. Hi I think there. I've got you. Cool. Perfect. Let me uh, get Jay in here, and we will uh, get things rolling. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Having all sorts of fun right. technical issues today. So that, that, that that's always fun. I just wish we'd go back to the typewriter at some point. But uh, we are going to try to pull Jay in here, and hopefully we can make this happen maybe okay uh i can't see you on skype i'm just seeing me and that's worthless to this audience <laughs> okay hey, hang on just a sec Let yes me push a button. Hang yes because uh because they've already got me on one camera they don't need me on two uh <laughs> and uh there is a side of there's jay i can i she's she's cut her own head off I just see you've cut the top of your head off. Oh, right. There we Let are. Me push the right button here. There we are. Okay. All right. Can you see me now? Uh, it's 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 no. working on it. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Okay. Well, we have got a great guest joining us today here on the old Skip Skype, the old Skype Rooney. We, we we've got somebody who knows how to use technology. Our last two guests have been phone guests because they're like, I don't know how to use Skype. I'm like, what? You don't have to use Skype, or my favorite. All of it. I know how to do Skype and fax. There you go. And, and I had numbers. somebody. I had somebody the other day want to send me a fax, and <laughs> uh, and 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 I thought, man, I thought I thought this stuff went out. I thought that went out with uh, the cable company would be by between eight and five, um, but. Uh, <laughs> Apparently, we're still doing that in 2020. But uh, we have got a great guest with us today. Go ahead and give us a brief introduction on yourself, my friend. Okay. Uh, my name is Lee Austin. I've been in radio for about 30 years. Wrote a book a couple of years ago after getting fired from a nationally syndicated show. Had a oh, caller wow. had a caller who uh, asked me what I thought about the flat Earth, and I said uh, I think it's I think it's insane. And I think you're insane, and goodbye, and have a nice day. <laughs> eight, eight, eight months later, after trying to disprove it, I announced on the radio that I became a believer. And a month after that, the owner of the network fired me. Wow. And, and then I went back to Florida to lick my wounds and wrote a book called Morning Star's Tale. And it's a book where Lucifer explains why the earth is flat, what it looks like, how the universe is put together. Basically what he's doing is he's giving you the game plan for how his side of the spectrum works from a spiritual and physical point of view. Wow. So uh, you 
you recently, uh, how, how we ended up getting you on the show today is SpaceX uh, launched, and uh, they, they forgot to add a fisheye lens to one of its cameras, and it broadcasted an unobstructed view of the flat Earth. Um, the video and the audio and everything is available at MorningStarStale.com. And uh, MorningStarStale.com. Check that out today. And uh, so tell us about this this video. Well, the best thing to do is let's do it as a tutorial. So if okay. everyone who is listening <laughs> would go to MorningStarStale, that's T-A-L-E, MorningStarStale.com. And when you get to the homepage, scroll down, and you're going to see a thing that begins to talk about SpaceX. Yes. Go, go to the 1043 mark of the video, and what you're going to see is two camera views from SpaceX. I actually live about 40 miles from Cape Canaveral, and I was going to go watch the launch about a month ago. And I decided not to because it's like when you live in New York City, no one goes to see the Statue of Liberty. So I came home, <laughs> got on the got on got on uh, the net, and I started watching the video. And I get to this 10:43 mark, and I start. My jaw dropped. I was like, "Wait a second, a am I seeing what I think I'm seeing?" Because I've been dealing with flat earthers like myself for four years, and they have all these experiments they concoct in their basement of their mom, and, and they go, well, if you do this, if you do this uh, eighth of a mile, and if you go to Chicago, and if you, and all of it is a glaze. People just go, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> this is an actual feed from SpaceX. This is not my video. It was broadcast around the world on hundreds of networks. And what you'll see at the 1043 mark is a disparity in view. You'll see the left camera, camera number one, show the curvature of the Earth for about 10 seconds. And then it goes to camera number two, and it shows a straight edge. So what you're seeing is the Earth from about 250 miles, because that's the altitude that the International Space Station does, quote unquote, revolve around the Earth. Yes. What you're seeing is the fisheye lens on the left and a straight view of the Earth without the benefit and distortion of a fisheye lens on the right. Wow. Have you had a chance to look at it yet? I've I've got that up right now for our uh, for our social media viewers and uh, television viewers. And yes, this is uh, very interesting. The way this video is 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 put together and shot here. That this is incredible. It's different from NASA because it's Elon Musk. And I'm thinking maybe in the bravado to get this thing up and to, you know, get the good word out that we're going back to the moon again, which we never went to. Uh, I think at some point they forgot one of the basic tools of spaceflight, which is fisheye lenses. Without those, you're going to actually see the Earth as it really is. And what you're looking at, in my opinion, is the highest altitude shot of the flat Earth recorded in the history of mankind and that's not hyperbole because at 250 miles no one has ever seen the earth without the benefit and i put that in quotes of a fisheye lens mm -hmm. this is actually what i believe the earth looks like from 250 miles out and as you can see it's a straight edge which indicates that the higher in altitude you go the further out that edge is going to go if the earth is indeed flat wow <laughs> <laughs> Jay, what, what what do you think about all this? Uh oh, she's, she's smiling. She's smiling, but we can't hear a word she's saying. She may have to hang up and call us back or something. I I, I don't know what the deal with Skype is today. I had a guest on earlier, and I went to switch from one camera to another, and my computer decided, well, we're just done with this microphone. So, <laughs> well, maybe, you just have, maybe you just have her call back, and you know, in the meantime, we can kind of fill in the blanks for her. So, way. so, so, tell me, uh, well, I, why, 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 we're, why we're waiting on her to to figure it out on her end? Um, I'm very intrigued by this. You had this this radio show, the radio job, and then it was gone because of these. Because of course, my friends in the radio industry. Oh, I love them so. Um, 
tell me a little bit about how uh, how you got the call that you know you were done because you didn't uh, prescribe to the uh, to to the to the way that radio does things. Well, back in 2007, I got a job working at a 50,000 watt radio country station. They played two types of music, country and western, <laughs> and they had done that. They had done that for 50 years. I went in and convinced them to switch to classic hits in the morning and conspiracy theories in morning drive, which I did for six years. I then moved to Austin and got a job with this network, and they're conspiracy oriented to a point. You know, they'll talk about the Federal Reserve. They'll talk about uh, 9 9/11 and all yeah. of that. But boy, you start going into the esoteric spiritual angle of it, they just shut the door quickly. So <laughs> this this was a network based on conspiracies. They just didn't like the one I was giving them because it didn't it it, it uh, affected their credibility when yes. they were talking about other conspiracy theories. So it was a it was a trip to say <laughs> the least. That's a strange deal. It 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 it, it affected their <laughs> it, it, it affected their credibility. Yes. <laughs> I love it. So uh, we have got a great guest with us today. So, uh, so Lee, get, getting back to this uh, this video, this this Flat Earth video. Well, I, I guess before we get back into that, what was the – what convinced you to go from you guys are crazy to, you know, this, this works <laughs> – it's the same with all conspiracy theories. Uh, my very first one that I was introduced, of course, was JFK, and then, of course, yes. we went into 9-11 and all that. So what I did was my due diligence. I tried to disprove it, and I went after all of the flat earthers, and the more I dug, the more it confirmed they were right and I was wrong. Again, I live on the east coast of Florida, and I've done some of these experiments. I've, I have literally sat on the beach – I've watched a boat go over the horizon, which to me proves curvature, but then I'll take out a pair of binoculars and the boat will come back into view. And that disproves the curvature. Then you see all these videos on YouTube, which I'm sure you have too. Yes. There's one from St. Joseph, uh, Michigan, and across 60 miles is Chicago. The Willis Tower should be about 1,400 feet under the curvature based on the Pythagorean theorem, which is based on the fact that the Earth is allegedly 2,400, 901 miles in circumference. The tower is in full view, but it should be 1,400 feet under the curve. And you've got countless examples like that, but I notice that everybody's eyes glaze over yes. when I talk about this stuff. Yes. That's what makes this video so unique because it's not my video. It, it's a SpaceX video, and they broadcast it for everyone to look at and share with their friends. <laughs> and they're the ones they're the ones proving that the earth is flat not me this is their video and this is in my opinion this is their yeah. oversight it's almost like with the moon landings you know there's a few things a few anomalies about the moon landing that show that this is impossible well this is a glaring example of someone not doing their job. It lifted off and maybe Bob over at SpaceX in the corner said, hey, did you put a fisheye lens on that second camera? <laughs> no! And that's, and that's what we get today. So I guess uh, what, one of the things that I have found very interesting about the, the whole flat Earth concept is for years and years and years, no one would ever talk about this. And why did this start gaining steam again that's a really good question and i really don't have an answer i know in about 2015 uh, eric dubay and mark Sargent, uh who i have interviewed when i had the show before actually i interviewed him right before i got fired uh, eric dubay and mark Sargent were pretty much the gentlemen in the beginning who started uploading these videos on youtube questioning the shape of the earth and then all of a sudden it became one of the most popular topics on youtube yeah. and then youtube uh decided that they didn't want to have this topic be as popular as it was <laughs> we don't know why and they started screwing around with the algorithms and now it's a topic that has gone underground again 
but it's almost like a rash. There's this resurgence of it coming in 2020. And I think what it has to do with is all the chaos that's going on right now with coronavirus and, and the protesters. People are looking for an outlet. Do you have any other topics that are not so dire and depressing? <laughs> <laughs> and to me, yeah. Flat Earth is an exciting, invigorating, and fun conspiracy theory because it really does go to the heart of the biggest deception of all time. If it is true that the Earth is flat, it is without a doubt the mother of all conspiracy theories, and I think it is. Well, the one the one thing you you brought up the uh, the JFK uh, assassination. You know what 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 one of the things I always find so strange about JFK is that uh, you know I, I I remember hearing well you know you had Lee Ar Lee Harvey Oswald who had the one gun. And then they declassified all those uh, documents, and then they found out that, well, pretty much everybody had a gun. And <laughs> and it was, it's, it's one of those crazy deals. Um, so is the flat earth thing basically gaining a lot of steam because of the Internet, and, and, and people are starting to find things like you found with this video and some of these other deals? It's almost like being an Amway distributor. <laughs> Yes, Amway. I people, Amway. people, people want to make money, and so they become Amway distributors. And when someone says, "So how do you make a living?" they say, "Oh, well, you know, I just got a job." They don't want to admit that they're actually into Amway. And I think right now, especially with your generation, millennials, yeah. Gen Z, Gen X, anybody who was just two different worlds. There's a world before the advent of the internet and the world after. So around 1990, 91 when the internet came into being, your generation has had the advantage of actually digging into this. My generation had three channels. Walter Cronkite said we landed on the moon, and we believed it, because why would he lie? Well, come to find out this, just about everything we've been told our entire life is a lie. And I think the younger generation is finally wising up not only to topics like the Federal Reserve, which is, leaning, which is leading Generation Y into buying Bitcoin. But this advent of the flat earth is really resonating with young people because they're open to the idea that everything they've been told is a lie, whereas the boomers are more accepting of this yes. fake reality that we live in. And my hardest time is hanging around with boomers because they're in complete denial. And when you even talk about the moon landing and you bring up the fact that maybe it was rigged and faked, they they act like you don't love America anymore, and that's not the case at all. <laughs> you know what I, I I the whole moon landing thing is is kind of a strange strange deal to me because I can I can see the whole thing with the yeah it was faked, but at the same time I can also look at it and be like, man I've been to like the Cosmosphere here in Hutchinson where they've got all this you know NASA stuff and I'm like. Man, if they were going to fake some of this stuff, they went to a hell of a lot of effort to do it. <laughs> so I really don't know <laughs> where, where to side with the whole moon landing deal. What I work in is a field of logistics for a trucking industry. Basically, I, sit, I, I work remotely like everybody else in America does right now. Yes. And people call in and they'll say, I want to ship something from New York to China, and I negotiate and broker a rate. I have no idea what's going on with my company. I have no idea what goes on in the office. I don't know anything. All I know is that when I get an email or the phone rings, I respond. And yeah. I equate that similar to the situation with NASA. Most people that work for NASA have no idea that we never went to the moon. They just work on their particular project, whether it's oh, a rocket yeah. engine or the oxygen or whatever. When you think about the fact that we landed on the moon with less technology than in your cell phone, and the fact that NASA admits they destroyed all the telemetry and that they destroyed all the equipment, that makes absolutely no sense. That's, See, like, that's... that's like winning the Daytona 500, getting on your car and going, I won, and then setting fire to it and going, what are you doing? Why are you destroying the equipment? This thing that's should be awful. in the Smithsonian. Yes. But you destroyed all the equipment, you destroyed all the telemetry, and then we have incriminating photos of uh, a Mr. Kubrick hanging out with the folks of NASA and also Arthur C. Clarke, the author of 2001 A Space Odyssey. So in 68, they bring it out 
2001, A Space Odyssey, simultaneously, and then in 69, Kubrick's finest work is the one he can't talk about, the fake moon landing. Well, and and see, this this is the thing, is that I, I look at some of this stuff, and... And you are right. If uh, if you get around, you know, some some of these folks, and you talk about various things, there'll be a lot of times people will people will side with you on various things. They're like, "Well, I can see that," but then if you bring up the fake moon landing deal, oh my God, they go nuts. <laughs> it's a hell of a deal. It it really messes with your reality. Think about it. When you and I went to school. The first thing we saw was a globe. We, we were indoctrinated from the day we walked into school. And it's the same thing with NASA. Think about this. From 1969 to 1972, they allegedly went to the moon six times. Since 1972, 48 years, they haven't gone to the moon. And here they are celebrating SpaceX rendezvousing with the International Space Station at an altitude of 250 miles when they allegedly went to the moon which is 240,000 miles, six times. Why is it they haven't gone back? Why did they destroy the telemetry? Why did they destroy all the equipment? And why can't they get back to a place they went to over 48 years ago? Well, that too. <laughs> oh, that yeah. too. Not to get <laughs> the, the, the reality with the fiction. <laughs> well, and, and this is the thing. Every single, like, uh, uh, when, when, when Bush was president and when, well, "Quote unquote president." When Bush was president, when when Trump was in there, all, all these guys are in there. They're always talking about we're going back to the moon, but then we never do it. <laughs> I have a, a, deal. a a belief I talk about in the book Morning Star's Tale, and and again, the book is narrated by Lucifer, and he and I agree on most of the subject matter. And the reason I wrote it from his point of view is that if I wrote it, people go, well, this is just a crazy kid living in his mom's basement. Yeah. But Lucifer gives it credibility. I believe the reason, and hang on to your pants, uh, that we never have gone to the moon is that it can't be landed on. I believe NASA has been around the moon, but they can't land on it because the moon is, in fact, a light. The sun is a light. And the moon is the is also a light, and they each display a different type of light. As a matter of fact, moonlight is colder than sunlight. They've done experiments where on a full moon night, the shade is warmer than the illuminated areas. Wow. Not only that, according to the Book of Enoch, and this is where I got a lot of this information and went way down the rabbit hole. I didn't go down the rabbit hole. I fell down the rabbit hole. <laughs> according to the Book of Enoch, he says... The moon and the sun are the same size, and that the sun pours its light into the moon and over a 14-day period fills it up, and then over the next 14 days it extinguishes and becomes a new moon. So, in fact, the moon projects its own unique light that it receives from the sun and doesn't reflect the sunlight, as we're told by NASA, and that, in fact, according to Lucifer in Morning Star's Tale, the sun and the moon are only about 3,500 miles away. Wow. And just below the, the firmament dome. Now we go down the rabbit hole. This is where it gets crazy. <laughs> That's a hell of a deal. I, I will have to say this, <laughs> this, this, this has been a, a tremendous, tremendous conversation. We definitely have to have you back and, uh, and, and, and chat because this, this, this is, uh, this is great. You, you've got all sorts of things that I would love. I wish we had more time to talk about. Um, I guess before we let you go, how do we find you online, get the books, everything else, my friend? Yeah, it's real easy. It's Morning Stars Tale, M-O-R-N-I-N-G-S-T-A-R-S, and Tale, T-A-L-E. It's a play on the word. Uh, if you go to MorningStarsTale.com, you can see that uh, video from SpaceX, and you can also uh, order the book through Amazon. The book itself is about 80 pages long. I did five rewrites and kept it short because, let's face it, millennials don't have an attention span, and the last thing they want to do is sit down and read a book. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> well, yeah. this, th 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 this has been uh, incredible. I appreciate you making time for us today, and thanks for coming on, brother. You're welcome. Have a great day, and thank, thank you, you man. I appreciate it. There he goes, and uh, this th that was Ooh. fun. We're going to definitely have to do that again uh, sometime soon, but we are just flat out up against the clock, and uh, that is that. Thanks for watching us on the old YouTube. Thanks for watching us on the old Twitch, and thanks for watching us on Periscope.
and thanks for watching, listening to all that shenanigans, the world-famous Jiggy Jaguar experience.